Jared here from Power Equipment Direct, and this is everything you need to know about portable generators. We're going to show you how to run it, maintain it, and troubleshoot it. We're even going to show you how to connect it into your home. Let's get started. So I've showed you a few cords that are great for 120 volt items in your home. But let's say you've got a 240 volt well pump. You're not going to be able to just plug into this generator and run that item. That's where a manual transfer switch comes in handy. Today we're going to show you how to connect into that through an inlet box and how it functions. So we're at a home with a professionally installed manual transfer switch. That is the number one thing. You want to make sure that an electrician does this install. We do not recommend you installing these manual transfer switches. On the outside of the home, you're going to have a NEMA 3R outdoor rated inlet box, which is where you plug the generator into. What you're going to do is start up the generator, plug this cord into the inlet box, and that's going to feed power from the generator into the manual transfer switch. Once the generator's up and running, and you've got your 30 amp twist lock cord, you're gonna connect that cord into the generator. This is how it connects. So this is a manual transfer switch. This switch is gonna provide power to 10 different breakers within your home. So some of the biggest benefits of a manual transfer switch is that instead of having to run individual extension cords or even a convenience cord, I've got all of my power coming into this one box. So I've already predetermined what is going to send power to, and I, there's no guessing involved in it. In addition to that, it's able to run the 240 volt circuits in my home, which you cannot get out of an extension cord. So that means well pumps, uh, dryers, things of that nature. I can actually have power going to them without having an issue with running cords or, or things like that. Now, each one of these is connected into one of the branch circuit breakers inside of your house. During a power outage, what you're going to do is switch these from utility power to generator power, and that's going to send power to those particular breakers. With our setup, we would have the generator outside, up and running, connected into the inlet box. We come inside the house, and then we'd flip the individual breakers. Under normal utility power, it's running directly from your regular utility box. When a power outage happens, you go through the same procedure and flip this from utility to generator power. And now that particular circuit is getting power from the generator. Now with a manual transfer switch, you can select up to 10 circuits, or you can even get into some transfer panels, which allows you to send power to your entire breaker box. What's nice about this is even when in generator power, this has no way of backfeeding up the line to hurt anybody. So with a manual transfer switch, we really want to designate this for powering the essential circuits in the home. You know, whether that be the refrigerator, a sump pump, or even some of the bedrooms. Even though you've got 10 circuits you can feed with the generator, that does not mean that you can run all of them all at the exact same moment. This is always going to be limited by the output of the generator. If you were to have a whole home solution, you'd really want to go with a standby generator that's going to feed this entire panel from the main breaker. So for example, I've got a refrigerator, furnace, and sump pump. Now I may be able to run all three of those at the same time, but if I were to flip on, let's say, a, an extra pump, a well pump, in addition to those, the generator may be maxed out at that point. So the key is you can turn on the individual items that you need to run at that moment. So properly sizing a manual transfer switch is really based on the largest outlet of your generator. For example, if my generator has a 30 amp outlet on it, I'm going to want to go with a 30 amp transfer switch. If I were to have a 50 amp outlet, I want to go with a 50 amp transfer switch. This will allow it to be a seamless installation and work best for your home. So while a manual transfer switch is not required by any means, it is a simpler, safer solution for people instead of having to run extension cords or other types of means to get it into your home. In addition to that, the biggest benefit is being able to run the 240 volt items. There are a lot of people that have well pumps in their home. If you were to not have a manual transfer switch, you would not be able to send power to that well pump, meaning that even though you have power for your refrigerator or lights, my well pump still isn't going to send water into my house. Mm -hmm.